What's up? Hello. Welcome back to another video with Simone. And your boy Dylan. Yeller. So today, guys, we hit y'all with that preview. It's preview Wednesday. Okay? Yep. So today, sorry. Today is the itch. Today we are hitting y'all with the Falcons versus Dallas Cowboys preview video. We're gonna be unbiased because we know we got some Cowboys fans. Oh, I'm gonna be biased. He's gonna be biased. I'm gonna be unbiased because we know we have some Cowboys fans that tap, tap, tap in. We want y'all to enjoy the show and have some key takeaways as well. So we're definitely gonna keep it on. Um, before we jump into it, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe because I'm trying to get 500 subscribers by the end of the month. And I'm trying to get 300 subscribers, 300 by the end of the month. So go ahead and hit that subscribe, you dig? Networking, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and start. So obviously we have a lot of takeaways from week one and I'm going to talk about the things that Dallas did wrong in week one or the things that can be exploited for the Dallas Cowboys so for my Cowboys fans that's listening these are things that y'all want to correct for my Falcons fans these are things that I want to exploit so the two biggest things we all know week one versus the Rams the Rams held the Cowboys to 17 points do y'all know who is on the Cowboys offense do y'all know I know. They have CD Lamb, they have Amari Cooper, and they have Michael Gallup, and they were held to 17 points. Oh, and let's not forget about Ezekiel Elliott. And Ezekiel Elliott. Well, Ezekiel Elliott definitely got off, um, but it was to the um, stopping of <laughs> the wide receiver trio, which yeah. I think is arguably one of the best wide receivers, could be on paper, the best wide receiver, receiver trio in the league. Probably number two, but they are up there though. I mean, Amari Cooper is nasty. CD Lamb, he looked he looked pretty good in mm -hmm. spots. Um, again, Sunday night against the Rams. Now, obviously, Michael Gallup is a speedster and can and can break the game open for sure. So the biggest thing, what was the problem? What went wrong? Why couldn't that get off? The biggest thing was the Rams defense. We all know Aaron Darnold was you know in the interior wreaking havoc, mm -hmm. and Dak Prescott was pressured on 19 dropbacks. He was met with pressure, and that pressure really exposed him. That it did. I mean, Dak has always known to be comfortable in the pocket. I mean, with that offensive line that he has, he's never really been pressured too much in the pocket. I mean, obviously, he's been sacked before. I mean, every quarterback gets sacked. Um, but a lot of the time, he has pressure. In, he has um, no pressure in that pocket, and he's able to sit back, um, go through his progressions, and throw it to whoever he wants. Um, but if you get pressure on Dak, he's not a game changer. He's not a playmaker. He is a game manager. If you get pressure on Dak, he will he will get out of his rhythm. He will lose sight of what he got going on, and he might throw you a pick or two. Dak's not Dak's, Dak's not the type of dude where he can you know extend the play and then make a deep touchdown pass down the field like a Russell Wilson or a Ben Roethlisberger in his prime or Aaron Rodgers. He's not that dude. He's a guy where he need, he wants to be in rhythm. Throw on, do some time routes, throw in time, and then keep it pushing down the field. Okay, and so Dak, of course, the offensive line just wasn't playing up to par. Carter Williams and Zach Martin, they had a pretty, they didn't play up to their full potential. They had mid-grade pro football focus grades, and we all know about the pressure that Dak got, and that was, you know, due to the offensive line. Um, Tyron Smith, he did pretty average, but he didn't live up to his full potential. Um, so... Dallas, you need to tweak that offensive line. Get those guys in check. We know there's no preseason because that is something that the Falcons D-line can definitely exploit. Yes, the Falcons D-line finally, finally, finally in the first game showed a pulse and showed like they could be about something this season. But they only did it for the first half. So a big key for this Falcons D-line is to not just pressure Dak Prescott in the first half. We got to pressure him throughout the entire game. That's something we saw in the Seahawks game last week. They pressured Russell Wilson, got three sacks on him in the first half, but couldn't do anything in the second half. The Seahawks made their adjustments, and Russell Wilson was sitting clean and pretty and throwing it all over the yard in the second half, and they can't let Dak Prescott do that. In the, and they can't let Dak Prescott do that this game, or he's going to carve us up with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, maybe even Ezekiel Elliott out of the backfield because our backfield is young, and it got carved up by Russell Wilson. Now, Dak is not Russell Wilson, but, I mean, if you give him enough time, He'll carve you up. 
and that backfield is definitely something that the Cowboys can exploit in this Cowboys Falcons matchup. Um, the Cowboys, I would say, you know, AJ Terrell, a young guy, a young defensive back for the Falcons. Yes, Russell Wilson did exploit um, AJ Terrell's youth. Um, when he was throwing to him, AJ Terrell definitely has to tighten up, especially since he's going to be covering either Amari, he's going to be covering even Michael, or he's going to be covering even CD Lamb, who was a young guy, but a young guy that was still getting off um, in the Dallas Rams game. I would say because the Rams did not allow Dallas to make any deep, they, they allowed maybe one or two deep balls, but the um, Rams were really playing zone coverage. They barely played any man-to-man, um, -man, and they pretty much used Jalen Ramsey as as a boundary any throws can come in front of him y'all can catch that but y'all are not getting past him and he did not the Rams defense did not allow barely any deep throws um, from Dak Prescott they basically had to dink and dive down the field so if the Falcons can find a way to maybe replicate what the Rams did then that is a possibility for the Falcons and the Cowboys they have to exploit whatever matchups they can find in the secondary and I think the biggest one that they will be able to exploit is that of AJ Terrell because he is you know the young fresh blood in the Falcons secondary yeah it's definitely something that they could exploit I mean Russell Wilson was able to find Tyler Lock on back-to-back -back deep down plays, deep throw plays, um, and last game. Um, so AJ Terrell, he's gotta he's gotta learn on the fly. That's just something he's gonna have to do. Obviously, he won the job coming out of training camp, so the Falcons saw something in him that you know was gonna allow him to start. But he's gotta show you know why he was our first round pick and why he's out there starting on the field. So he's gotta step it up this game. I know he's a rookie. I know he's gonna get beat deep, but. We have to we have to be better when it comes to the secondary. We can't get we can't get beat like that. And there was a fourth and five play that really changed the momentum of the game. We were um, the Seahawks were only up I think it was fourteen to twelve or something like that. And then we were we had them fourth and five. They went for it and got a thirty eight yard touchdown pass. Stuff like that can't happen in the backfield and in the secondary this game. And also another thing that the Falcons are gonna have to look out. I think. Um, as far as the zone goes that you were mentioning, that's going to be good for us because we already play a matchup zone. Um, that's Dan Quinn's defense. That's um, Mark Manuel's defense. So we should be fine there. And we should be able to, you know, we, we've already kind of, you know, make sure they can catch anything in front of the sticks, but not letting them pass the first down. So I think we'll be fine there. But another thing is Chris Carson carved us up last game. He scored. He had two receiving touchdowns and he, I'm pretty sure he ran for over 100 yards. So we can't let that happen with Ezekiel Elliott. Obviously, Ezekiel Elliott is better than Chris Carson, so we have to be able to stop Ezekiel Elliott, as Elliott um, not only rushing, but catching out of the backfield as well, because that's something we know he's capable of doing. Definitely, for sure. And let's talk a little bit about Everson Griffin. Uh, we all know the Dallas Cowboys added Everson Griffin in free agency at the beginning of the game. Um, he was definitely looking hot. But I don't think Everson Griffin really got off as much as he could. He only had three solo tackles. He had one assisted tackle. He had zero sacks and zero forced fumbles for an overall um, pro football focus grade of 33.7. So Everson Griffin, they are definitely going to need to see more from you. Um, we all know the, yes, they have Demarcus Lawrence as well. Let me see what Demarcus Lawrence um what he did because Everson, like they, they need to see more activity from you, way more. Like they invested in you. You supposed to be out there getting some sack. You are supposed to be leading the defense, especially early on in the season because the offense is always come along. So in the defense, the defense, all you gotta worry about is rushing the passer. I mean, come on now, especially when you're a defensive lineman. Your sole job, sole purpose out there in the field is to get to the quarterback and <clears throat> make plays in the backfield. And, the Dallas Cowboys paid you a good bit of money to do that, and you're not doing it right now, Everson. So, Demarcus Lawrence had one tackle. That's it? That's it? That's a tweet? He had one tackle. They are definitely going to need way more. They're going to need way more from um, Everson Griffin and Demarcus Lawrence. They, of course, you know, first game back, Everson Griffin's with a brand new team. Um... But you want to end, buddy? Just it's the same moves. Got to rally, get to the quarterback. Get yeah, him, get there, <laughs> get there, man. You you've done this before in Minnesota. Get there. And he's a veteran. Like actually, I don't want you to get there. Never mind. You can do what you did last game. That's fine. But the Dallas Cowboys, Demarcus Lawrence, Everson Griffin, they definitely need more from the rush. When I tell you, um, they only Jared Goff was only pressured on eight percent of the time. Eight percent of the time. 
was Jared Goff pressure. Dallas Cowboys, if you have any chance in this game, you are going to need to put way more pressure up front on the quarterback. Um, but let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, sadly, they lost Leighton Van Der Esch in the middle of the game, so they're mid-defense. Um, the linebacker group has some holes in it, and that is something that the Falcons can exploit. Oh, for sure. I mean, something we got Todd Gurley who can catch out of the backfield, so we might see some of that. Obviously, we got a good slot receiver in Russell Gage. The first um, game starting, he had over 100 receiving yards, so Matt Ryan was already fond of him and showed that chemistry between the two in game one. So you can expect to see some of that going um, in the middle of the field. So with those great linebackers being out, the Falcons can definitely export that, whether it's Todd Gurley catching out of the backfield, Julio running some slats, Calvin Ridley running some slats, Russell Gage. Um, the Falcons have currently right now have three guys in the top seven in receiving. So... I mean, all the guys had big games last week. Julio, Calvin Ridley, and Russell Gage all left game one with over 100 yards. So, the linebackers, y'all better be on it because Julio, Calvin, and Russell, they're going to be on it. Todd, they're going to be on it. Y'all better be ready. And I will say the Cowboys receiving core, nobody in the Cowboys receiving core saw 100 yards last game. That is something, obviously, you know, they needed way more scoring. They are going to have to find ways to get – Dak and get a wide receiver connected with Dak. Um, one of them, they got three three good wide receivers. One of them connect with Dak early and consistently throughout the game. Um, lastly, the last big thing I want to mention is um, Trayvon Diggs, um, cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. We talked about AJ Terrell being a young cornerback for the Falcons. Trayvon Diggs is definitely filling big shoes and um, Byron Jones, um, but we'll definitely have to see um, we definitely probably will see Matt Ryan. You know, he's got a young, fresh cornerback to exploit now on the other side. Oh, yeah. Matt Ryan is going Matt Ryan's gonna to pick on you, Trayvon. And wh whoever you're guarding, he's probably going to pick on you because Matt Ryan's going to find his dupes. He's he's out of that phase of way back when a couple years, forced feeding it to Julio. I mean, I just gave it to you. All three guys, all three wide receivers had over 100 yards. So he's going to find the open guy. That's what Matt Ryan does. So Trayvon Diggs, you leave your man open, Matt Ryan going to pick on you all day. Guys, this is going to be a great matchup to watch out for. Sadly, it's 1 o'clock game. You know, I want to see some of these games in prime time, but whatever. Um, <laughs> this is definitely going to be a matchup to watch out for. Two teams in the NFC that are fighting for a playoff spot. Both teams are in divisions where it's kind of tough. Tough. Well, is the NFC tough anymore? NFC East? It is. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you lost to somebody in the NFC East, so obviously it's tough. Should be, but <laughs> definitely the Falcons are looking to stay alive in the NFC South, and the right. Dallas Cowboys are looking, you know, just like everyone else in the NFC East, to be that top dog in arguably one of the worst divisions in professional football. Yikes. But mm -hmm. guys, stay tuned. We're going to drop some more matchups. Let us know what other matchup you guys want us to analyze, and we've got you guys. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you tune into the game, and make sure you tune into our post game at 4 15 p.m. Well, I don't know, because you're going to be at work. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be at work. Huh? So, we'll, we'll see. She might drop a video. I, don't, I won't drop one until maybe, like, Monday-ish. We'll, we'll, we'll see what's popping. But we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll give y'all something. Though. But we'll just make sure y'all subscribe. That's it. Bye.